What's up, everybody? My name is Lamont, and welcome back to the God is My Source podcast. We bridge the gap between God, money, business, family, education, relationships. We know that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. I got Coach Tressa on the line today. How's everything going for you? Everything's going good. Going good. Amazing. Good, good, good. I appreciate you for hopping on. Coach Tress is going through a, a trial and tribulation right now. She lost her boyfriend of four years a couple of days ago, but she still wanted to push through and said that she still wanted to do the work of God and come talk with us, honor her engagement. And she said that she know that he would have wanted her to do this in his absence. So we appreciate her for coming on and talking with us, giving us your time. I know this is going to be an amazing episode. She's an author, speaker, coach, consultant. She's been in the recruiting industry for over 20 years. She has her own staff and company, and she's an empowerment coach too as well. So I love watching her videos on social media. She's very funny, motivating, but she gets right to the point and helps everybody out. So we're going to start off with a word of prayer. We're going to get into your testimony and talk about your journey with the Lord. Absolutely. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to come closer to you, Father God. We thank you. And we know that we overcome by the power of our testimony, Father God. And we ask you that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord Jesus, Lord. For you told us to seek first the kingdom of God. And as we seek you first, knowing that if we are diligent in you, you will give us everything that we need. So we ask you, God, to just speak to us. Help us to touch someone. Help us to bring someone closer to you. And help us continue to stretch our faith. We ask you to bless Coach Tress and now, Lord Jesus, Lord, for keeping her engagement, keeping her honor to it, being on the podcast, despite the things that she's going through. We ask you to just continue to comfort her. You said the Holy Ghost is a comforter, so we ask you to continue to comfort, comfort her. Give her a peace that surpasses her understanding and help her to continue to trust you with all her heart and lean on not on her own understanding. In all our ways, she will acknowledge you and you will direct our path. So we thank you for everything you've done for us today. And thank you for everything you will do for it. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray this on the Shelby. Amen. 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 Thank you for that. Uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. I, I appreciate you. I mean, like I said, I, I I get more out of you by watching your social media. So to get you on the podcast, this is about to be amazing. I know you're about to drop some gems. Like, make sure y'all y'all tap in with Coach Dresser, too, because she going she gonna to help you in all aspects of life. But she also has her own coaching company where she helps people start their own staff and company. In fact, she quit her job. And when she quit her job, it was the first year you quit your job. Mm -hmm. The first year she quit her job, she made like triple her income. Like, and she was already making six figures. So we're going to talk about that. Matter of fact, what is your testimony? What has God brought you out of? We know you were going through this trial tribulation now. But what has God brought you out of? I know you're from Virginia. How did everything start for you? Absolutely. Well, um, <clears throat> I am a little country girl. I am from Southern Virginia. Actually, I was born in Martinsville, Virginia, down there by the uh, North Carolina border. And uh, come from humble beginnings, lived, uh, grew up in a trailer park and uh, had my pa my parents come from a blue collar uh, background, you know, no college, anything like that. Um, one of the things for me growing up, I, I always knew there was something inside of me that I was bigger than my environment. And, um, I used to always dream. I always had a vision and I always told myself, my vision is bigger than my reality. And even though I may not have had everything that the coolest kids had on the block, my mom, I may not got what I wanted, but my mom and I made sure I had what I needed. And so as I got older, um, I actually have a 25 year old daughter. I had her my senior year of school, a uh, high school. I didn't get the chance to go to college. Uh, I went later on online to online classes, but I didn't get the chance to experience that out of high school because I did have a baby. Um, but even through that, you know, just being in relationships, toxic relationships, uh, abusive relationships, I just kept seeing something that was more inside of me than what the what I was currently in. And so uh, fast forward, because I know for time purposes, um, when I decided, well, true testimony was I witnessed actually my aunt 
my aunt lived across the street from me. And this was many, many years ago, I think 2001. And um, she died from domestic violence. Um, yeah. And her ex-boyfriend shot her in front of her, in front of the kids, including my daughter, who was two at the time. So this has been over 20 years. And um, I remember going over to get my child. And when I went over there, I saw her just laying there, just, just laying on the floor. And so seeing that made me say, I don't want to be another victim. I don't want to be in that, her same shoes. I don't want to be in a jealous type relationship. And so I've always been used to in the past, I always ran from my problems. And so going through that, going through that type of grief, I ended up moving an hour away, which was Roanoke, Virginia, um, just to start over, to get away from even my babe, my, my child's father. And I just was just trying. Um, I started, that's when I started getting into staffing and recruiting in the healthcare field at the time. And uh, being, don't, being in that in that type of environment, even though I was masking a pain, I started hanging around people who, you know, they were like, oh, there's something wrong with you. Take a pill for this, take a pill for that. And the next thing you know, I found myself self-medicating myself with uh, taking pills to relax me, to make me go to sleep and uh, self-medicating myself with drinking every day, smoking weed and all those things. And even going through that process and dealing with that, God said, I have another plan for you. This, this is not you. Every time I got comfortable, there was a shakeup. There was always a shakeup. And when he moved me from my hometown to Roanoke, there was another shakeup because I ended up leaving Roanoke to move out to the Newport News, Norfolk area. And uh, when I, I moved out there, I was just trying to start over. I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to start my life over. And I just wanted to really just, I really was trying to pursue my acting career. That's where it all started. I was like, I'm going to be an actress. I, can't, I didn't want to go to college. I was always speaking. I was always motivating. And um, so I moved out to that area and didn't understand that, you know, of course, it's hard to get a place um, when you ain't been on the job long enough. And so I was struggling trying to find a place. Um, I end up sleeping in my car. I slept in my car for eight months. And during this time of transitioning, thank God for my parents, because my child was still young. You know, she was like four or five. And so I knew I needed to leave. And so my mom was so supportive. She said, well, leave your daughter here until you can get yourself settled in. And so I wanted to, I always looked at, everybody looked at me as the go-to person, the strong person, the go-getter. And so having that time where I slept in my car, I actually got gained a better relationship with God during that time. You know, I would, um, I was working at Verizon. This is when the dial-up DSL days was there. And um, calling people, asking if they want to upgrade to DSL. <clears throat> and so uh, I went through that process of, uh, I didn't want to say I was homeless, but I remember whenever I would get money, I would go to sleep, go to hotels. So therefore I can at least have something where I could take showers and stuff like that. Cause otherwise I was going to the gym, getting free guest passes early in the morning before I started work. I made sure that when I got paid, I would take $3 and 12 cent, put it to the side for daily, my daily meals, because I went to 7-Eleven to get a big gulp, a bag of chips and a hot dog. And I knew it was three twelve. And so I really was just trying. I was always this girl that I was always trying. Um, I never had anybody, I would say, in my corner that was pushing me. And it, I really was my own coach. I was really just trying to figure out. But it was nothing but the grace of God that kept me. And I remember one night I was in a car. It was so cold. And I said, God, I, I don't want to. I, I need something next. What's next for me? Because I know I'm here and I'm trying to find a place in the Tidewater area. And it just wasn't working. Just so happened, I ended up having a um, hernia uh, on my uh, belly button. And so I had to have surgery and I ended up leaving to go back to my parents um, to stay with them. And so because I was a contractor, I lost my job and I thought I was a failure. And I was like, man, I've got to go back home. And I did. I went home for a little while. Again, I told you every time something happens, it's like a shakeup. And I remember probably maybe a month after being out from the surgery, my uncle who lived in Northern Virginia, 
he's like, hey, I'm about to uh, buy a house in Lord and Virginia. Would you like to move up here? I was like, yes. I, I didn't know. I didn't know what to expect. I was like, I'm, I'm just ready. And I told my mom, she was support, supportive. And this was like, uh, I was 22, 23 at the time. Uh, let me see. Hold on. No, I take that back. I apologize. I was actually 26, 26, 27. And in 2005, I remember this because I, uh, 2005, I actually moved up here in April. I moved up here April, 2005. And I was just trying to figure it out. I was going doing these little odd end jobs. And, um, this is what I wouldn't really, my money was funny and my change was strange. Right. And getting payday loans, uh, rent to own furniture, you paying three thousand for a hundred dollar TV because you got it. so. <clears throat> I just I didn't have people in my corner really teaching me the importance of entrepreneurship and the importance of financial literacy and the importance of just being mentally stable. And um, I used to suffer in silence, so everything and every situation I've been in is just kind of just harbored inside of me. I always kept my feelings to myself. And so when I was up here in the Northern Virginia area, I just started hustling in a good way where I started uh, working for the first government contracting company, which was Computer Science Corporation at the time, CSC. And I was in HR recruiting and because um, I had already did medical health care recruiting in Roanoke and um started doing that, met new friends and um, got into a new relationship, um, which in that relationship ended, it was actually for 13 years, but um, during that time, I was working at Macy's. I was working the government contracting job. Not only that, I was, when I was working at Macy's because I had Macy's discount, I used to go and buy clothes off the clearance rack, like baby clothes off the clearance rack. I would take them. And back in the day, eBay was popping. And so I would take those clothes and I would lay them out as outfits and I would be like new with tags and I would be, I would sell it. So I was like, just trying to make money, you know, back then, back then I was only making $13 an hour in recruiting HR. And um, a lot of my stumbling blocks were because one, I didn't have a degree. So I knew that it was going to be extra harder for me to get in the door. And so I had to tell myself, I said, you know what? And I still live out of this today. I said, I got what it takes. I got what it takes to be in that boardroom one day. I got what it takes to sit here and make six figures one day. And even when I was at making $13 an hour at my full-time job, I remember on Sundays, I used to drive to that job and I used to tell myself, I used to speak affirmations and I would say, I'm debt free. I'm debt free. I wasn't debt free. I mean, I had a 500 credit score at the time, you know, just trying, just trying to make it. And um, so I stayed with my uncle for a while, but I felt like, okay, now was the time I'm here. I'm stable. I need to bring my daughter up here, you know, because my, my mom had had her for, you know, a few years and I would go back at home, but it's nothing like a mother's love and making sure your child is with you. So I got my own place. And um, so I started living, like I said, in Northern Virginia and, um, Throughout the years, you know, I was just trying. So I started, I didn't have friends. So at the time I started my company, which was Eventful Concepts. And so Eventful Concepts originated as event management company, just, do, just doing events, networking events. And honestly, I was losing more money than I was making it because I was always charging free or $20 or whatever. So I literally would, my hustle mindset was like, all right, go to these restaurants find out their slow night and promote it. And I would go to restaurants. I said, listen, I would, I would like to do a networking Wednesday for professionals after work from five to seven. And then I would tell them like, can I get discounted rates on food? And we have drink specials. And it started from there, me tr truly building a community and saying, dang, you know, I'm really truly stepping out on something I've never done in an area I don't know. And then I started connecting. And it was that point I started falling in love of entrepreneurship. That entrepreneurship meant something to me because I was looking at, got all these professionals who work a nine to five like me, they get off of work, everybody want to have a little drink, whatever, just to decompress and talk about the boss and man, whatever. And I said, oh, we got something in common. Everybody would love to really elevate into their own, you know? And I always said, once you rec once you recognize 
who you are is a recognize, strategize, and then you can monetize. And so I started doing these events and I just started hosting them throughout different restaurants in the county and to the point where I started doing my own at, at, at the hotel. My last event, big event that I did was in July, uh, no, excuse me, May 2018. I had the BYOB conference, which is Be Your Own Brand. And uh, I remember when I used to promote at the church, they were like, BYOB, what's that? Because you know what the BYOB in the street term is. So they like, what's that? BYOB. And I said, let me spell this out. <clears throat> so it was Be Your Own Brand. And it was a women's networking luncheon. And I wanted to really teach women how to truly recognize you can be your own brand. And you just got to recognize the gifts within and tap in. But it also takes a good support system because see, a lot of times when we are in, let's say, relationships and friendships, everybody don't have your vision. Everybody don't have the drive that you have. And that was one of the things that I struggled in in my relationships. I was always in relationships that they thought that I was like, oh, you all over the place. You always doing something. But this was my passion. You mm -hmm. know, I, I wanted I didn't want to just be sitting up, cut her up. I wanted to just make money. That's just who I was because I wanted, I always kept telling myself from the 2005 days, I'm debt free. I am debt free. I'm debt free. I didn't know when and where and how, when the money's going to come. I just kept saying, I'm debt free. I would never be broke another day in my life. I was saying I was never broke when I was broke. And, you know, and they say, fake it till you make it. That's what I was doing. And I just kept telling myself over and over again. And so in 2018, and you can tell me to stop because I know I can talk and if you want to insert questions, but um, in 2018, in 2018, uh, after I had that event, uh, well, pro let me back up. One, one year prior to that, I wrote my book. This is called I Found Strength in My Struggles. And um, it's actually out on Amazon. And I sell this book is actually, it's the five-year anniversary for this book. And mm -hmm. it talked about all of my struggles from financial burden to uh, playing the numbers every day. Uh, try, look, I was even playing numbers every day thinking that I was going to get lucky and that was going to make me debt free. You know, you know, I go to church. They said, turn to the Bible, John 316. Right after church, I'm at the 7-Eleven playing 316 and I'm boxing it and I'm whatever you combo in it, whatever you want to call it. And so this was my journey. But what this made this book so uh, a great part of my my journey was it really talked about me going through with my aunt passing. Then during that time, and also my grandma passed, you know, unexpectedly. I didn't have money. I didn't even know what I was doing, but I was Googling. I didn't have a mentor. I didn't have a coach. I literally was Googling how to write a book. Even this picture, it was a, it was a picture off my iPhone and um, I couldn't afford it. So I always tried to make the most of what I had. So fast forward to 2018, June to be exact. Uh, June 22nd, 2018, I decided to leave another government contracting company. And I remember my boss coming in there and she said, well, you know, the grass is not always green on the other side. And she kept saying to me, she's like, uh, you sure? You sure you want to leave? What, what, what are you going to do? And I'll be honest with you, I didn't, I didn't even have a job lined up. I knew I had my business name, Eventful Concepts, which because when you working for a full-time company, you sign an NDA. So I couldn't be doing recruiting for my company and their company too. So eventful concepts always was like the event side of this house. Right. So, and I never forget. She was like, I can't believe you going to leave. You need more money. And I said, no. And I think I was making probably like with benefits 130. And I, my pivot moment of that time was, you know, like a plant. So, you know, a potted plant, right. After a while, when you buy a plant from the store and it's in that pot, and a lot of times you can water it, nurture it, give it sunlight, and it's growing, it's growing, it's growing. But sometimes the plant has to be repotted to a bigger plant because in a bigger pot because the roots inside that uh, pot is intertwined and it won't. Oh, I just got chill bumps, and it won't, it won't grow. That's where I was at in my life, in my journey. I felt like I was this plant in this pot. And my roots, which is my gifts and everything, my ambitions, everything that I want to do, I was like this and I couldn't grow no more. And it was bothering me because I wanted, after I had just came from doing the BYOB event, I was like, oh my gosh, I just got this. I'm like, oh my gosh, I just, I was, I felt suffocated. 
And then I was going through a transition with being in a 13 year relationship. And I'm like, this is not growing me. This is not growing me. This is not at all. I knew I needed to leave. I was like, and it was toxic at times. And so I was like, I got to get out of this. I got to get out this job. I just wanted to yell. I really did. And so I knew that in order for me to grow, I had to be repotted to something different in order for me to grow. And I trusted God. I trusted God the whole process. So when I left in June, in my mind, I said, um, well, I got my 401k money. I got six weeks of vacation. And so I'm putting all this in my head thinking like, oh, I can, I can, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give myself a six month journey. I'm gonna give myself a six month journey to really try to figure this out. And if all else fails, I can always go back and get another recruiting job. And so during June, I left the relationship. I moved from one town to another town. I, I left because in that environment, I was too close to the relationship. So I left that and I got a new place. What was crazy was people would be like, I got the place right before I left. So when they looked at my income, it looked like I said a full-time job. I didn't tell the landlord, oh, I'm about to quit because they wouldn't have gave it to me. And um, and I moved into a townhouse. I was so happy with myself. I just, I'm like, wow, this is really happening. And so during that six months, I was just trying to figure out, I would go out, I was going on LinkedIn. I was hitting up companies. I was saying, hey, do you need BD? Do you need recruiting supports? Do your search. And I was like, okay, I'm going to be the consultant. And uh, first couple months, it was a struggle. I'm not going to lie. It was a struggle. But everybody was so happy for me because people look at me like I got it all together. And they like, oh, man, you're doing your bit. I want to be like you. Little did they know, like, I'm sitting here really put, living off my savings and things like that, trying to make it happen. So from June 2018 all the way to October 2018, and this is the first time really truly sharing this story, but in October 2018, I remember looking at my account because, again, I was just like trying to figure it out and I was getting out of end jobs. I even did lift for about a month or two just to pay my car payment. I was like, OK, I know I need to get a couple of rides in the morning. And um, in 2018, I remember I looked at my account and I did a screenshot of the account because I said no one would believe the story. And I logged in at the time I was banking with PNC and my account. I had a virtual wallet, a savings account, and a checking account. I don't know why we get all them accounts and they got money in it. And um, I looked at the account and it said four dollars. Mm-hmm. I kid you not, I got a screenshot of it. I made sure I took a picture because I said one day when I'm on stage, I'm going to show this story. So my account was down to four dollars, and I remember like, dang. And I had a disconnect notice. And I'm like, man, and I'm like, I don't want to ask nobody. My pride was just like, dang, everybody thinking I'm thriving in this thing. And so I remember calling the Salvation Army and I was like, uh, I have a disconnect nose. I just need some assistance. And they was like, well, this was actually end of September was when the, I saw, no, end of October. And they say, well, right now you got to wait till November 1st because the funds is already depleted. Wait till November 1st, we'll put you on the waiting list. I said, okay, I'm still trying to get a contract. Still trying to get a contract. And the guy, my boyfriend, who I met in 2018, um, he saw something in me. And it was crazy because even when he didn't know I, I didn't tell him. I was trying to be cute with it. Uh, he zailed me $100 out of nowhere, I remember. And I'm like, wow, look at God. And I didn't even tell him to a year later about the account. Because, again, we were dating and he's thinking he thought I was all that. He was like, oh, man, you an entrepreneur and all this stuff. And so... Um, I just kept trying to figure it out. And I remember the light bill was about $300. And I said, okay, should I take this hundred or wait till November 1st? And I said, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. But during that time, I just kept reaching out to people. And I started reaching out to my old bosses and companies I used to work for. And this one company, Oprah's Group, um, they were like, hey, trust, because I used to be their recruiting manager. And I said, yeah, you know, I got my own thing going. I said, uh, if you need any recruiting support, they said, actually, we do. We just got this contract with Department of State. And they said, we need we need you to come over here and run it and stuff. And I was like, man, for real? I was shocked. And then they was like, and I'm thinking like, I need money up front. And I'm like, man, I can't do no net 30. And so next thing you know, um, I said to him, I said, well, and I said, I'm going to bet on myself. And I, he said, well, what's your rate? And I said, 
I said, okay, I'm a consultant. All right. I know what I was making when I was at the, at the other job. So I said, I'm going to give you the family friends discounts. It's going to be $75 an hour. He said, man, thank you so much. I was like, I was like, oh my gosh, like what? It was like, he, he said, thank you for giving me a discount. So now I'm thinking like, dang, I should have charged a hundred. But the humbleness said, dang, Tracy, look. You had people contacting you for $30 hour jobs and whatever. So he said, well, so how do we, do we need? I said, so, so here I go in the, I didn't even have it wrote out yet. The contract was in my head. So I'm already giving him the verbal terms. I said, so this is what we're going to do. I said, you can buy a bucket of hours. And I think at the time he, he said, well, I want to purchase, um, he wanted to purchase, oh gosh, what was it? I want to say it was either hundred hours or 200 hours, whatever, how many hours he wanted to purchase. The total value was 15000 15000 So this is what I told him because he, you know, some, nobody's going to give you a check for 15000 I wish I knew how many hours that was. Whatever, 15000 divided by 75, that's what it was. And so I said, but to get started, 50% has to be paid up front. Mind you, I ain't had no money. If you go back to my videos in 2018, I'm serious. If you go back to IG, I'm... Happy Monday, y'all. So listen, my nugget today is never never give up on your dreams. I'm telling this to y'all, not knowing that I was speaking to myself. So mm -hmm. I said in order to get started, it would be 7500 up front. And then the other 7500 can be um, built up, uh, invoiced after the job is done, the hours are done. He said, okay. And I said, well, how, do you know when you're going to... Um, cut the check like I'm trying to figure it out because I'm like they got the disconnect notice I'm sitting here I ain't want to go to my boyfriend ask for no, no money like that and uh so they was like well we'll go ahead and get this process and um I said well I could take ACH payments so we set something up in the system and I never forget that morning of my intake call with Salvation Army because I told you they told me I had to come back on the first of the month and I never forget I forgot I had it but the money had already hit my account. And the lady called. She said, I just want to let you know, we got the funds. She said, when you, I'm a, um, I want you, uh, she said, uh, we can do it over the phone and we'll wire the money to the to the uh, electric, electric company. She said, but one of the things, she said, either you can come in person or fax it to us, but we need like uh, your copy of paycheck, your lease and all this other stuff and blah, blah, blah. And so I said to her, this is what felt so good. I said to her, I said, actually, I said, I won't, I'm not going to need to come in. And she said, you sure? And I said, well, actually, I, I got blessed today. It hit at midnight. That's what's so crazy. And um, my poem was at 830. And I said, I got blessed. And I said, there's somebody that can, that can use those funds. I said, she said, but this is already set aside for you. And I said, I get it, but I'm going to pay it forward. I said, the truth, I could have went ahead and took it. But just something said, do the right thing because that unexpected blessing of getting the seventy five hundred up front from this first contract really jump started it. And so she said, "Okay, I'll take you off." So I, from that point on, when I kept saying I would never be broke another day in my life, I just kept speaking it. So from that, get they got that first contract satisfied that the 15,000 came in next thing you know they wanted to purchase another bucket of hours bam another 15,000 and I said it just started pouring in and I remember my boyfriend at the time he said look you can't be working in your kitchen like this you gotta really truly set up an office he said you gotta set up an office he said and I was like but I ain't trying to spend all my money setting up buying all these monitors and he actually bought all these like three or four monitors and set them up for me and bought desks for me so I could have a true real office. And I told him, he said, I'm sowing a seed into you. And from that point on, that was the end, that Christmas going into the beginning of that 2019, that 2019 year, next thing you know, it was companies coming to me wanting recruiting services. And I and I I remember like I'm looking like dang one month I got twenty five coming in one month I got thirty thousand coming in I mean it was coming in so crazy, and I remember my boyfriend said listen he said you are gonna need some help and he had been telling me he had been working a full time job too and been trying to do it on the side and that was just a one man show, and he actually he said I'm gonna take a risk and he quit his job and we was doing it together, working together. And he always told me, he said, listen, this is your baby. I want to see, he told me, he said, I want to see your account get to a certain amount. And I want you to get yourself, do the right thing. I started working on my credit. 
and it felt good to pay credit cards off. It felt good not to just, just be in the negative sometimes. It felt good. And from that point on, it just build and build and build and build. Man, when I tell you, when I got ready for my taxes for 2019 and I saw that number and I was like, oh my God, I just made triple of what I came from. And that was, let me just make sure I get this right. That was gross profit. Now, once you take away operating expenses, he brought it down to half. I was still happy because that's when I started learning how some people get a break with taxes. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, because the W-2 world, they just taking taxes out, taxes out. But this thing that's set up for business owners as an entrepreneur, when you are paying for everything, they, they give it back. They actually give you a tax break. And I was like, oh my gosh. And so- that 2019 was awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. 2020, I'm, I said, I'm ready for another. So now I'm telling myself, I'm going to double what I made. And bam, March, pandemic. Pandemic hit. And I'm like, oh, wow. So I was like, okay, people still need recruiting service. But what was happening, the people's, I guess their budgets and stuff was getting smaller. And they didn't want to hire outside help. And so even, I was well off. One thing I will say, I was blessed during the pandemic that I didn't financially go through anything, but I started operating in fear over faith because mm -hmm. March was the pandemic, April, May, June, July. And I'm like, oh, wow, August hit. And now I maybe been breaking like 5,000 a month, you know, if, you know, whatever. And I'm like, oh gosh. And I, I was just like kind of getting a little shaky. And then my a company of my the uh one of my clients called me September 2020 and they said, Hey, how uh we just want to know how would you feel about coming over here being the president of talent acquisition? They said, hey, you want to come over here and be the president? Yeah, they was like, come over here and be the president. They said we'll pay between 160 and 200. And in my mind, I'm thinking like, mm, I talked to him about it. We in a pandemic, and I'm like, I don't know. But then I'm thinking like, I'm about to. And he, they told me this. So of course, if you do that, you can't do business at your company. So, I again that fate, that fear kicked in. So, and I had to give him a twenty a, a, a twenty four hour notice, and I decided to put my company on the back burner to go in and help this company restructure, reorganize their government division, commercial division, and build up a recruiting team. And that was the highest W two salary I had. And um, I did it and I did it. And one of the things I realized as a salary employee, I was working 60 hours a week, 60 hours a week, 120 hours. And I get paid. The check is still the same because your salary. So technically, I'm not getting the salary they gave me because I'm working for two people. And then the taxes is coming out on top of that. And so I was going through the motions. I, don't get me wrong. It was the experience. But. Remember I told you about that plant I was back in 2018? It was time to repot myself. And because in my mind, I'm saying, okay, Tressa, you did it before. You took a hiatus off of that to go focus on this. And I just kept feeling myself work burnout, out. Just, and I was stressed, mentally drained. I wasn't eating. And so this year, again, now I was doing my company on the side for speaking engagements only, but I couldn't do recruiting. So this year, um, I in February, I was like, I, I got to take that leap again. I got to take that leap again. So it's crazy because I did it in 2018. And then I took a little short break to come back during the pandemic. And then this year when I gave a notice, I officially left in June. I don't know if you saw that video where I said why I left my nine to five, because I did it again. And I remember they were like, you should, they didn't want me to leave. But I'm like, if I don't believe in my vision, who will? I'm like, I, I believe in me. I'm a bet on myself again. The only difference is taking a leap of faith now versus when I did in 2018 is that now I'm I, I planted myself to prepare. And, you know, in order to get to that promise, you got to go through the process. So having to say now on my LinkedIn, if you look at my LinkedIn under eventful concepts, you see the other job where it says president. To say, my, my credentials now speak for itself. So now when I'm going out getting contracts, I can use my work experience. And that's why I try to teach people in entrepreneurship, allow your nine to five 
to fund your passion, to fund your business and, and, and maximize it. If the job is paying for certs and all these skills, get that. Because when you do take that leap, you got some skills that you learn. And now it's, it's, it's not like you're just out there in limbo, but the fact that I was prepared and it got me within the week after I started getting contracts again. And so June, I left June, June, 2018. And then I officially left this year, the second time, June, 2022. So, um, so I left. So since then, here I am, I'm here and um, it's been great, but I will say from the staffing side, one of the goals that we had talked about was, Hey, get a couple government, give a couple contracts. And I wanted somebody to really run that division. I was like, okay, I've been doing it for so long, but I really want to go back over here to this whole, my coaching programs. I want to be able to help, um, uh, whether it's companies, I can even be a consultant show companies how to build, grow their business. A bit. I was doing business development and, um, I said, okay, if I can help a company make millions and millions of dollars, which is what I did in 18 months, you know, uh, I grew the company 200 plus employees under me and I grew and they was like, wow, they were so shocked that I did that. And it made them a lot of money. I could do it for myself. And so doing that, I know God has been calling me right now in this season. He's calling me to truly operate in my purpose. Um, I'm working on my second book, how to elevate an entrepreneur. And entrepreneurship right now that's the working title but i also have some other things that i want to do which was kick off my podcast um for the beginning of 2023 so that's kind of where i i am and even during this time of taking this leap and trusting god trusting the process and leaning on his understanding and not mine i now one i'm in a better place mentally I have been so many years, I've been on go mode, go mode, that behind the scenes, when people don't see me at night, I'm up at late at night thinking and wondering and just stressing myself out and having the anxiety. And that's what I talked about in my book. So I'm here. I, I can't believe I'm telling you all this story because I've never shared this. And um, even like I said, going through this week where my boyfriend literally just now had a heart attack in front of my face. And so I know he told, he told me the other day when we were talking, I said, I want to, I want to really focus on this, this getting these entrepreneurship programs up and running. He said, Tressa, what are you waiting on? You, you work for yourself now. You know, he said, your recruit, the recruiter thing is over here, but you work for yourself. And so, and, and I'm here, I'm here to share the story. And I know he's looking at me like, okay, well done, well done. So that's pretty much in a nutshell. I probably talk so fast about it, but yeah. No, nah, that's that's crazy. Like you, you, you say you moved in fear, but all I see is crazy faith because how God works is is that, and and it's crazy because I'm going through a season similar when it comes to the the accepting the nine to five. So, but God was telling me He was like, you was pursuing your own thing on your own time. Yeah, I gave you the vision. But the Bible say, write the vision, make it plain. Though the vision, Terry, wait on it. You feel what I'm saying? And I'm just yep. trying to make stuff happen because it was like, it's been years, guys, it's been years, but that's your timing. Then it come, it come full circle. It was like, nah, because I need you to be in this realm of business, in this line of business, because guess what? If you're going to be what I told you you're going to be, you got to understand the skills. You got to understand the people. You got to understand the business. Can't be no shortcuts if you really want to do this. Right. So what you did was God basically, like you said, planting you in different pots. He planted you in different pot with different soil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. New nutrients. New things you had to get used to now, because I don't know what you're doing now, but I see you on stages. I, I, I like, I see you doing all type of stuff now, like, because with that experience that you just had, you gonna be able to create apples. You gonna be able to create Microsofts. You gonna be able to like assist people doing all type of stuff. Look, watch this. We gonna look up one day. Your speaking engagement price is gonna be fifty thousand dollars, and you only gonna be getting up there for an hour. You know what? <laughs> my money, my money goal. I have a money goal. My money goal is to make fifty thousand dollars a month. Now, of course, I want to shoot and be more, but I'm humbling myself into stages. 
I know what I made. I know what I have done. So I'm like, all right, now my money goes 50,000. And I always do a reverse engineering because I used to say, dang, if I, what could I sell? Just make one, one pop on $50,000 or break that down. What could I, what program? Maybe it's $10,000 programs, but, and that's for clients. That's on the client side because the difference with entrepreneurships is that you have your small business, your go getters, like, like the people who are just trying it. And I get it, but you got to think about the price points for the, for those type of people. And nobody going to just want to put up 10 grand for a coaching program. But guess what? What if you over here at the nonprofits at the schools and they got budgets, okay? They got the budget. They got training budgets, personal development budgets, where you can go and talk about employee engagement. You can talk about just all these motivated coaching programs that you can offer and you can now say, hey, you got five clients giving you 10,000, bam. So the fact that you said 50,000, I literally wrote that down. I said, okay, that's my money go. And then when I achieve that, I'm going to double it. And when I achieve the next, that's how I'm working right now. That's how I'm doing it because I truly believe that your alignment, your next assignment is in your alignment. And a lot of times, like I said in my video, you know, it could be cuffing season all day long. But what about the cutoff season? You, <laughs> you got to really cut some people off. And I'm telling you, when you start cutting, when you start letting go and letting God, that's when you start thriving. That's when you start striving and glowing and growing and flowing. Because at the end of the day, you got to tell yourself, I got what it takes. Whatever you see you have what it takes, as long as you keep dreaming, you can manifest that thing. And I tell myself all the time, like when I went to see Eric Thomas, um, uh, 2020, the, the 120 conference. I went down there, see him. First time I went to Atlanta, I spent the money. And of course it was like, you know, I had a friend like, what? You spent, uh, you spent that much money you're going to see him? I said, listen, you got to see, you got to put yourself where you see yourself. Yes, I could have got a virtual ticket, but I need to be in the room because proximity is power. So, being on the room and looking and seeing the guest speakers, guess what? I'm listening, but I'm also visualizing. Who said I can't have an event? I used to do events. That who said I can't be on stage hosting my own thing and doing this? And so, I'm just so pat. I'm just so passionate when it comes to purpose because I look at my story, I look at my journey, and you know, my mom and dad is so proud of me, and it feels good for me that. I can pay out. Sometimes I'll surprise them and pay their mortgage for a month. They looking at me like, what? Like they just, they just, because they they come from humble beginnings. But the fact that I can do that, that feels good to me. That feels good to me to give back because it's like the Bible says, give and it will be given unto you. That good measure, press down, shaking together, run it over. We be poured into your lap. And so I stand by that all day long. It's about the reciprocity and, and about giving. So that's kind of how I feel about it. Hey, it's gonna happen. You gonna you and we gonna look up, and I'm prophesying this now. You gonna have one of the top African American owned HR conferences in the world. Watch. Wow. Wow. You look up and you go. You gonna see it happen because you don't even realize. Like you might do, but I'm gonna say you don't realize because I don't hear the doubt in your voice, but I hear, hear the how in your voice. I mm -hmm. hear the how in your voice, but mm -hmm. you already equipped. Wow. Everything you want to do already, you already equipped. Now it's time to take a step. You mm. might have to take a fast. You might got to get in this book a little bit more. You feel what I'm saying? Because we already know, like when he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Right. He wants to seek him because he wants to see how much we trust him. Because if we going to seek him. And we don't care about the money. We don't care about the time. We don't care about family. We don't care about friends. We care about him more than anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're right. The songwriters say, I love you, Jesus, more than anything. You feel what I'm saying? Then we yep. get in a position where we trust the Lord with all our heart, literally. Leaning not to our own understanding. It's going to mm -hmm. become some times where you're going to get large sums of money, but God going to say, turn it down. Right. You know what? And I just recently did that. I recently did that. I had somebody, it's so funny. You just, I, oh my gosh, like literally two weeks ago, somebody wanted me to, um, they wanted to pay me 15,000 to be, to come in and run their consultant, their, their, to run their division, like basically what I did from the W2 world. 
And when I saw, I read the contract and I'm thinking like, what? Oh, wow. Okay. As a consultant. But when I saw they wanted me to come in the office four days, three to four days a week. And then I was like, this is more like an employee type of contract. And then that yeah, you can't do no business outside this. So now I'm limiting myself. And even though to some it may look like, oh, that's good money, but I'm like, okay, I might as well just stay at the last job then. Right. Cause they they was like, this is a consultant gig. And I'm like, and, and I had to tell them, I said, unfortunately, I can't take it at this time. And it felt good to do that because again, I know that what God has given me in this season is, is I got a 10 exit, but to his plan, because at the end of the day, obedience births favor. I feel like my, I would say it's the PPP method, your passion plus God's purpose equals prosperity. Stop going into business adventures on the money first. Look at your value. Look at the, what's your why? When you want to start a company, you trying to start this business Stop going in like, yeah, I'm trying to go to be rich. You know, waking up every day is being rich because every day that you wake up, you get a chance to go out here and be great. You get a chance to go out here and create and motivate and celebrate. And so that's to me is rich being able to operate and rejoice in the, in the day that he's given me too. everybody don't get a chance to wake up. My boyfriend didn't get a chance to, to see today. You know, so I'm now like I have a purpose to finish what I started. And so my every time I'm doing something, what's my why? Because it's bigger than me. And my why now, even though I have eventful concepts, I God said, I need you to give some more love over here to empower to elevate. You have empowered to elevate. You already have the LLC over here, you know. And if it means that, like I said, my goal was to have somebody over here running this side. So I can focus. I mean, truth be told, I got two companies and that's my, this is over here, my passion. And whether I have to put this on hold so I can plant over here and be able to launch the podcast, launch the conferences, like you said, the women conferences. And I'm still, even right now, one of the things I've been trying to do is ask God, like, okay, God, should I stay focused on women only or make it to those just whoever in general man or woman that needs this you know vision don't discriminate who you are when you got vision he gives you provision and so i'm i'm just right now that's what i'm trying to iron out now like all right let me narrow down the niche audience we already know who they are but i need to know what what's the direction so i'm in my season of fasting i'm in my season of meditating and just really truly being obedient what he wants me to do in this season. Amen. Amen. That's how it's going to happen. That's what he said. He said, trust in the Lord. He said, trust in him with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Yes. Said, Acknowledge him and he going to direct your path. They said a good man steps is ordered by the Lord. You feel what I'm saying? If a good man steps ordered by the Lord, he going to lead you into that secret place. And he who right. dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. That means nothing can stop you under the shadow of the almighty. That's why depression don't last under the shadow of the almighty. Anxiety don't last under the shadow of the almighty. Anger don't last under the shadow of the almighty. You feel what I'm saying? It can't dwell exactly. with you. So exactly. now you have no choice but to succeed because he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Paul yeah. already told us the kingdom of God is joy, righteousness, peace, and the Holy Ghost. You feel what I'm saying? Yes, yes. That's how it's going to happen. Them seeds going to get planted. You feel me? going to be in that good ground. Some going to produce 34, some 60. But when you really want to do it, you feel what I'm saying? You really want to live for God. You really want to pursue that purpose. You feel mm -hmm. me? Feel that purpose. You're going to be in the hundredfold. And that's Ooh, how yes, I love it. I love it. And I know you're interviewing me. And one of my questions is, if, even for you, is like, you know, your, your podcast, God is my source podcast. Like, you know, like I, I can't believe I'm asking you this question, but what keeps you, what keeps you motivated to continue to do this thing? Because I know a lot of times some people, you can get weary and well-doing, you get anxious for nothing, and sometimes you get discouraged. And I think sometimes when you don't have the right support system, I just want to know, like, because there are people who look at what you're doing. When I saw this, I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm I, this is my first time being invited to a podcast to speak and i know this is going to be the start of many and just to see you doing it and already i know there's people looking at it like you like 
what keeps you motivated and going? The the season in which this seed was planted, to be honest with you, the season in which this seed was planted. The crazy thing is, is that me turning to God was me turning away from money, to be honest with you, because I was always saved my whole life. Like in my in my eyesight, I was always mm-hmm. saved. And then in 2019, I came to a mindset of understanding. You feel me? Like I really started taking God serious and started taking God at his word. And then I had made a hundred over, I made like around a hundred thousand dollars. Like it was a little bit over and I'm hustling doing this. I'm doing all type of stuff. Like I'm doing anything you could probably think of in 2019. I probably did it. You feel me? Trying to get my money up, but I was trying to get money up to fulfill the purpose that I thought I had for my life. You feel what I'm saying? Like I wanted to be this big time rapper, entertainer. I know I understand finance. I know I understand business. What I wanted to do was, is I wanted to be Jay-Z and Warren Buffett put together. You can't stop me. And we going to, we going to like, I was going to make all of these companies and stuff because a seed was planted in my life early on when I first started in finance that I was going to have a large company. So all I'm thinking is, is how can I make this happen myself? And so then now I'm just trying to make right. it happen myself, make it happen myself. A lot of trials and tribulations come. Now 2019 hit. I see I made, I did the hundred thousand dollar goal. And I was kind of scared that I did it because I'm like, where my money at? I'm like, where my money at? So 20 mm. mm. I went, I, I had did a uh I, I just went on faster social media because I was like, look, I'm living for the people too much. I'm like, I need to, I need a break. Uh. I was like, I need to regroup anyway. And I thought that that time was, I would, that was me putting myself on a fast. I thought that I can be able to go into like a, a zone. You feel me? Not straddle the fence, but get more in God, get on my stuff. You feel what I'm saying? Write some more songs, meet some more people, network with some more people. You feel me? And then that 30 days led to 60 days. Then the 60 days led to 90 days. Then the pandemic happened. I didn't plan on the pandemic, but I made sure I was like, okay, I'm going to read this Bible front to back. I had a regiment. I'm going to read the Bible front to back. So I'll start reading the Bible front to back. I read Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. And I was like, Mm -hmm. I really like getting into the word. Then that 90 days come, I'm like, nah, let's, let's try six months. Six months come. Now I'm in the word for real. So if you ever read the Bible front to back and you start off reading about, you can read, if you read four chapters a day, you can read the whole book front to back in a year. But by the time June, July come, I'm in, I'm in Psalms, Proverbs. And I'm starting mm-hmm. to see like where everybody else is around me. And I'm like, they care about the world too much. This is where I was. I was like, no, nah, matter of fact, I'm going to go the whole rest of the year. I read this Bible front to back. Went the whole year, no social media, no real contact with the world. You already know it was kind of depressing. And so like I was I was going to a prophetic ministry, but I started seeing owls like it was weird. I started seeing owls. Hmm. And so I started seeing owls all the time. Never knew what it meant. I'm asking everybody what it means to see owls like I don't know what it means. But I asked my grandmother. She said it got something to do with vision. You feel what I'm saying? Mm. Like, she's like, it got something to do with vision. I don't know, but I feel led to tell you got something to do with vision. So then like the year go past, like I said, I read the Bible front to back. I was trying my hardest to like get out of what I was in. You feel me? You already know how that bondage is like living in a specific type of lifestyle. Like you trying to, you straddling the fence. So then by the time the end of the year came, I made up in my mind, I'm like, I'm about to go on a 40 day fast because I want to shake these demons out of my bag. You feel what I'm saying? I want to shake these demons off. So I went on a four day fast and started 2020. Right. No food. The first three days I went no food, no water. I was like, I need direction. I need wisdom. I need clarity. I need to be able to understand like what I need to be doing, like what my true purpose is. Did that 40 days come. I'm getting all this revelation from God, understanding. And it's just like, all right, what do I do next? You feel me? By September, my father had had brain surgery. He had two brain surgeries. 
it was oh I believe it was September 1st or the 2nd. But I had just donated my first $10,000 seed a few days before this. I scraped for this money. I'm talking about credit cards. I scraped for this money because I was like, I want to do this. And he gets sick. Now, a month later, I got to move back to Cleveland. I'm living in North Carolina. I got to move back to Cleveland because it's like he functional, but he can't work, can't do nothing. Right, right. So now he ends up having to have a third brain surgery. So he has a third brain surgery. Now I made up my mind. I'm like, I'm about to just, I'm, I'm about to just move back to Cleveland. Like, it's over. I can't keep going back and forth. I got to move back to Cleveland. So then I moved back to Cleveland. I did a, uh, I already had the God is my source going. Like I already had started making t-shirts and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like that was my way of, that was my uh, carnal way of trying to, you feel me, get my $10,000 back, but not knowing but something was being birthed. Mm -hmm. Right, so right. everybody loved it like god is my source i love that i love that god is my source god is my source and i always want and i got notes of notes and notes like i said i already knew i wanted to make a billion dollar company but i got notes on notes on notes and podcast was in it podcast kept coming up podcast kept coming up one day i see the uh i see the uh an ad for david shan's podcast boot camp five days i hop in the boot camp you feel what i'm saying like i'm in there with all these different people but the oh, name about. Is just ringing. It's like God is my source. Everybody like that's dope. I, I like that name. I like that name. And it, I'm just you feel me like this is something I heard ringing. Like you feel me about hearing different preachers. And then when they God is my source, I'm all right. God, God, yeah, God is my source. You feel what I'm saying? Then I ended up I find I start going through the process with it. I started interviewing people. I bought GodIsMySource.com, and I was like, look. Mm. I got other stuff going on, but I feel led that this is like something I need to focus on. And the craziest part is I tried to start right. another business to try to fund it. Like, you know, when you get your carnal ways. So I started trying to run a business to, to run it. I started trying, and then now, now I lead to two, three businesses because you got to link everything together. You feel what I'm saying? Now, God, hey. like, look, all this money you done use for this. You could have dumped it into this because now I'm learning how to actually operate the podcast, how to market, how to get more yeah. listeners, how to do different yeah. things. But by this time, it's like June, July. And I'm still I'm wow. Wow. trying to go. But then one day, God showed me the new place where I was about to work. He like, you you worried about all of this stuff. Like I back a few months before that, I had met somebody who worked for the number one, you said consultant. People don't even know about consultant. I want to get into that too, but I met somebody who worked for the number one consultant company in the whole world. This working at this consultant company, like be, working for the CIA. That's what my friends told me. He like that's like working for CIA yeah. for, for consultant. We I mean, for companies because they run every. They basically back in run almost every company, government situation in the. And instead of focusing on that, I end up getting the interview bomb the interview but i know like all right i need to be a consultant because this is what god's showing me but i'm doing everything else trying to make everything happen mm -hmm. god give me a consultant job in like july august he told me yeah. i was gonna work there ended up working there getting the money that i needed now it's like all right this this was birthed in a season of mm. you feel me like it was birthed in a season of trial and tribulation and now God deposited everything back into me that I needed. And it's like, all right, I see what you're trying to say. I see what you're trying to do. That's what keep me motivated with God is my source. I got other stuff, but that's what keep me motivated. I see this. I, see I want that sweatshirt. I, okay, I, I got you. I got you. No, I'm dead serious. I'm, I need to know how to purchase that. I you know. I mean, I like the red one and the black one. Like, I'm going to be repping it. And I'm going to be, when I'm on my TikTok, I'm like, this is how you go get it. Because at the end of the day, it's all about connect. It's co collaboration over competition. Uh -huh. It really is. I, but I do like that. I do want to purchase. I want to purchase too. So, okay, definitely. But this what that's what bur it bur it was birthed in the season of trial tribulation. Really having to focus on God being my source because my back was against the wall at the end of twenty twenty one. Early 2022, my grandmother died at the top of 2022. 
One of my closest, I had denounced my, I had pledged Alpha for Alpha in 2000, what was that, 2013? And I had uh, denounced my letters in uh, 2021 when I went on the fast. One of my closest friends that was on that line with me, he died a few months later after my grandmother died. My mother's, one of her best friends had died at the top of 2020, so like 2022. And it was like, it was real dark. But I still had to keep pressing forward. I had to keep pressing forward. I'm like, nah, like, God, if God, my source, I got to lean on. It was like me, everything I learned in 2021, it was like, now you got to really, like, turn the light on, turn the ignition on, because the right. day is coming. Like, I already showed you your purpose, because then I started, like, getting into the prophetic more, understanding, like, my gift is a seer. You feel what I'm saying? And God starts speaking to me about it. You feel me? Visitations start happening. It's like, okay, if you're a prophetic seer, that means you're a prophet. If you're a prophet, that means you got to assist people to exit out of situations. You feel what I'm saying? So the devil going to come 30 times harder. Prayer got to uh, increase. You feel what I'm saying? The word of God got to increase. You got to know this word of God like it's the back of your hand. Right. That's what it, it started right. really making me have to understand. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. You feel what I'm saying? Like every time I doubt, you feel yes. me? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Like he gonna supply your every need. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. You feel me? You delight yourself in the Lord. He gonna give you the desires of your heart. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. You really understand this word? It's gonna take you wherever you want right. to be honest with you. Like if it's in his will, now some stuff not in his will. That's what people gotta understand. Some stuff not in his will. Mm. It's not in his will. You feel what I'm saying? And if it's not mm -hmm. in his will for your life, it's just not going to happen. You right. can't be mad. And then when you find out later, like with the whole rap thing, you feel what I'm saying? I was good at what I was doing, but I was trying to use my prophetic voice for the wrong right. purpose. Wrong. I was using the gift I had for the wrong purpose. My ability to talk to people, my ability to connect with people, my ability to, you feel me, say stuff that people scared to say, do all... That stuff was for me to be used for the kingdom of God, not the kingdom of darkness. No matter how I tried to dress right. it up, it was work for the kingdom of darkness. Right. You know what I'm saying? It was it was work for the and I and I was making connections all over the place. Like if I probably wouldn't have went on that social media fast in 2020, I know for a fact we probably wouldn't be having this conversation right now. But what would have probably happened was I would have probably made it big like I wanted to and regretted it. Because now we 2022, that, that, the mm -hmm. big target on your back right now is to be a black rapper. They dying every second. I didn't know this when I was when I was pursuing this and I was doing it. Like, and I had, like I said, we said the corporate job. Mm -hmm. I've been working in finance since I graduated from college. Like, I'm talking about, Ooh. I'm working, I'm, I know I have to speak to CFOs. I have to speak, but I'm like, you get into that mindset of, you feel what I'm saying? Like, with uh the entrepreneurship and this is before the wave happened i'm like i read rich dad poor dad reading rich dad poor yeah. dad you know it take your mind everywhere you're like yeah i'm not about to be a slave right. anymore i need to get on the right side i'm trying to do everything i need to do and get on the right side except trust god mm. Mm -mm -mm. and I you know what right you got it i would say i always tell people though know, thank god for the interception because mm -hmm. see, a lot of times we question God or we may get angry God or we scratch our head, why God, why God? Like, why I didn't get this job? Or why I didn't get married? Why I didn't get approved for this house? Why I didn't, why, 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 why? Listen, you got to thank God for interceding and, inter and, and, and had an interception on your behalf because guess what? You was one decision away from marrying the wrong person. You was one decision away for taking a job that was not supposed to be yours because God knew in advance that that was not supposed to be for you. You was one signature way of getting a house that you know you couldn't afford because your finances wasn't lined up correctly. And so when you when we look at things and we see what we think it's our way, no, it's his way. So thank God. I would say thank God for the interception. You was one exit, exit away from being in that major car accident. Sometimes delay is necessary. It was necessary. It was necessary for you to take a pivot, to take a shift. Like you said, you was about to be this rapper or whatever. I might have, look, three, I might have been, because I'm always on social media. I probably would have seen you out there on, on the shade room in Hollywood Unlocked. <laughs> no business. Or, or, or in chalk. <laughs> 
in chalk because that's what's happening to him. I tell my friends right there, I said, man, yeah. I'm happy we we ain't really do what we thought we was doing or God was yep. he was interceding on our behalf. He'll let you get into certain room because guess what? Right. These the people you call to talk to to bring them on the right on the right side exactly. of the tracks. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like you, you, you supposed to be talking to to bring them on the right side of the tracks. They're going to see you. They're going to see your life. You feel what I'm saying? And then you go through different seasons where you feel like, okay, like, all right, God, it's kind of slow over here, God. Like, you feel what I'm saying? It's kind of slow over here. Right. Like, I'm I'm used to doing events where I'm making ten thousand. I'm used to doing events that I made a. The, you feel what I'm saying you used to doing events that you're doing different things or like because I I was a big party promoter too. That's what led me into the lifestyle. You feel what I'm saying so like you did events so I already know the the hub. I tell people all the time if you don't want to sell drugs you need to get into an event game. But I'm thinking of it just small level. Right, People don't right. even know that some of the biggest events in the world generate some of the biggest income. If you're watching this podcast right now and you're trying to figure out how to kick your business off, ask God to send you an idea to do an event for your business. Because they do things called, uh, what do they call them? They call fundraisers. Every, com every big company that you see right now, Fortune 500, I don't care what it is. They did some type of fundraiser to raise funds. In fact, Airbnb, what they did was, you know the story about Airbnb? How they started? They kicked off by no. selling Wheaties boxes with John McCain on it when he was running for president. And that's how they got that thing. They got like either twenty five dollars or $50,000 to pilot they, pilot they app. Uh -huh. So like you can do different things, but like the skills that we we got from the events, it was like God was just using it. He was teaching, letting you learn it. Yeah, He let you learn it in the world. We in the world, not other world. So now I'm gonna let you learn it, but I'm 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 gonna make you take some steps back just so you can be able to take these skills and make it happen. I'm one day. That's why I was depressed. I got getting depressed. I one day we made like. I made ten thousand dollars in one day, and we had made that weekend we had made, I think around, it was in between 20 and $25,000. And we lost so much money. I was like, wait, so if I make $25,000, I'm still going to lose. I'm like, oh yeah, it's, 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 it's slow. And then it was just, that's when God would start working on me. Like you got to stop seeking money. You seeking money. You ain't seeking purpose. I'm listening to Dr. Miles Monroe all the time, but you, you ain't oh, seeking man. You're not seeking the purpose. Like, that's why I loved you so much. Because I'm like, oh, is she talking about what it need to be talking about? Like, everybody always talking about money, but ain't nobody talking about the purpose. Ain't nobody talking about finding that value so you can fulfill this purpose. Every last one of us, God has put a gift inside of us. But he put the gift inside of us to add value to other people. And when right. you add value to right. other people, they got to pay you for it. Why? Because you in demand. It's the law of supply and demand. If everybody wants you, they got to pay a lot of money to get you in their room or to get you in their uh, yeah. program or whatever you do, whatever you good at and God allowed you to be good at right. it, you use it for his glory and he going to make something happen. It might not be what you want it to be, but it's going to be for his glory and he going to come on time. You said uh earlier, you said that your check came at 12 a.m. You had the you had the meeting at 8 a.m. You had to tell him like, yeah, yeah, man, I'm not going to be coming today because I just got blessed. Everybody blessing coming, but you got to wait on it. The vision, Terry, you got to wait on it. You feel what I'm saying? And, mm -hmm. and most of the times when we don't get blessed, when we want to get blessed, it's because God doing the work. It's a process, but also he can't give you that blessing with a mindset that's going to destroy the blessing. Mm. You're going to destroy it. You're going to get the bag and you're going to blow it. Right, right. Man, oh my gosh, you didn't just, you didn't throw, you didn't threw some gems. I'm actually glad we actually had this because I know we were supposed to meet at seven and I pushed it back. And you know what? You was like, let's reschedule. But I, I needed this. 
Cause even though I'm 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 grieving, I needed this. I needed the I needed this. Trust and believe. And I'm a strong believer of numbers. And you know the number eight represents new beginnings. Mm -hmm. So the fact that I got on this at eight o'clock to talk to you to share my story and it's a new beginning. It's a new it's a new season, a new chapter. You know. And so um, I always say the best is yet to come. Hey, definitely. I, I would say that too. I I love everything you represent, everything that you, you talked about. One thing I had wrote down that you you had said, I seen you say, you said, focus on yourself, embrace the journey and stop comparing. If you ain't show nothing else in this interview, you show people that, look, when you got something, when God got something for you, it's for you. You were mm -hmm. sleeping in a car. You grew up in a trailer park. Now you on your way to millions? Probably this year. We don't even know your balance sheet. You ain't talking about that. We ain't got to talk about it. Because I already know what time it is. Because once you put some pieces in place, you're going to be having $10 million, $100 million years. You, in, you, in de, you, you know you in demand. Now, I already know you see it. You in demand. You all the way in demand right now. Because why? Because everybody and their mama tried to do entrepreneurship and didn't understand how to do it but they don't even understand the 1099 game. Man, I might have to book you to my speaking event so you can <laughs> speak and get some jail. Man, not the 1099 game. That's a blueprint right there. Go that's, ahead. That's, that's, that's entrepreneurship. Go ahead and do an ebook on that. Look, I'm giving you permission. <laughs> the blueprint to the, ten, the blueprint to the 1099 game. I'm telling you. Telling you that right there, woo! That's that they looking product. for you, and they looking for you, and you looking for them. They like you. You ready to call them and give them the ten thousand, but they ain't in position. You ready to call and give them like, look, I don't care what you subtract contracted. We just need the job done. But everybody running around trying to make, trying to do the B to C game, but not even understand that the B to B game. Matter of fact. Boeing ain't it, Boeing is the uh number one recipient for government contracts right now, and aren't they? Uh, is it, yeah, it's either them or let me see, is it North? Well, I think I know Northrop is up there, Raytheon, but maybe Boeing. I think Boeing may be up. I think I think so, or GD General Dynamics too. Yeah. Because what they do is they get contracted by the government to supply them with the stuff. So they, they I know Boeing. They supply the Department of Defense with almost everything when it comes to planes and planes yes. and engines and Rolls Royce in that game too. Rolls Royce in that game too. But like I said, we make sure y'all tap in with coach trust and she going to get y'all the contracts. She going to get y'all the jobs. She going to help y'all build y'all staffing company. And she just going to help y'all learn how to shed y'all light, share y'all light, not shed it, share y'all light. Because that's what we on this earth for. We are kingdom builders. But the first thing first, we got to seek first the kingdom of God so he can show us how to not put our light under a bushel. You feel me? You got to put it on the table so everybody can right. see. Everybody exactly. knows God exactly. did it for you. Exactly. you right. Everybody going to know God did it for you. If they, if they don't know God did it for you, what are they going to think? You did it? Or you, or you, or you going to give the credit to somebody else? You get the credit to anybody else, God going to take it from you. Remember mm. that. Mm. You know, Bar. That's that's a dry, that's a mic drop. You're really glad I ain't got no mic in here. <laughs> that's a mic drop right there. <laughs> you know, Ooh, he God. Gonna take it from you. He go, he go, he gonna let you enjoy it. You feel me? You, you yeah. gonna enjoy it, even if you got it yourself. Everybody talking about I got it out the mud. I, you feel what I'm saying? Everybody talking about uh I'm self-made. In my opinion, saying you self-made is a one-way ticket to lose everything you got because mm -hmm. you ain't give credit to credit to the person right. who gave it to you, which is God. I think it's Psalms 37. Let me see. I think it's Psalm 37. I don't want to be wrong. I tell y'all the wrong thing. Oh, yeah, we were everything back to the word of God on this uh, channel too, so y'all. 
Yep, Psalms 37. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. It's right there. He's going to say, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. You got you to gotta be patient. Do not fret because of him who prospers in right. his days. Because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. Make sure y'all read Psalms 37 because this is going to teach you how to not worry about what nobody else is doing. Don't worry about somebody else season. You feel me? The Bible tells us, let us not get weary in well-doing for in due season. You're going to reap if you faint oh. not. But if you faint, you're not going to reap. You feel what I'm saying? You're not going to reap what you sow. And you always yeah. going to reap what you sow. So if you, you feel like you've been planting seeds that need to be harvested, Seeds of righteousness, seeds of joy. You feel what I'm saying? If they need to be harvested, you can't you can't faint because the storm's gonna come. And then when the storm comes, how you think you're gonna get water? You let the bamboo, they said the bamboo, the strongest plant. You mm -hmm. feel me? And it grow the fastest, but it takes a long time to get those roots you was talking about. Because it gotta stand tall. So the roots gotta be big enough to keep it in the ground and keep it strong. So them roots going to grow. And once them roots plant, now it's going to go up. Going to go right. up. Gonna go up. And then it got to go through storms. You feel what I'm saying? Going through storms. But it's going to keep going up. Keep going up. Keep going up. Keep going up. Then boom. Bamboo season. But appreciate you for coming on. You shared, you shared your, your whole entire testimony with us. And that's going to inspire many people. You went from the trailer park to the boardroom, calling the shots. You was the president of a multi-million dollar company. And now you about to build your own multi-billion dollar company. Mm. Amazing. I God receive it. God, God is, is my source. He, God is my source. And he provides the resources. Period. <laughs> Period. <laughs> so, yes. So, with that being said, where can they find you? Yeah, so I'm on Instagram. I have an Instagram page. I have a TikTok page. And I also have a Facebook now page. All my handles are Coach Tressa. I have that across the board. I do have, for my professional, I do have a LinkedIn page, um, Tressa Mans. Um, you can go if you want to connect with me through LinkedIn as well. So, that's that's pretty much it, you know. Um, if you go to any of my handles or my um, pages, if you go to the links in my bio, you are, are I do have a, like kind of a link tree where it shows my link to get my book. You can purchase my book or you can go to Amazon directly. And again, the book is titled I Found Strength in My Struggles. Tagline, a purpose to finish what I started. Um, what else do I have out there? And then, of course, my website, which is uh, www.eventfulconcepts.com. So, like I said, be ready for the empower to elevate, um, and I'm because I'm I'm got some stuff cooking right now, and even though some stuff is supposed to be launched actually this week and next week, it's just a little delay right now. Um, as I get through this, you know, with the uh, you know, with making funeral arrangements and things like that, but uh, this too shall pass, and so I just truly believe. Listen, your 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 setback is needed for your comeback. Definitely. And delay don't mean denied. So um, I'm just so glad that we connected because I'm pretty sure this, I, I, in my, in my spirit, I feel like this ain't going to be the last interview that we do. I feel like somehow, somewhere we're going to connect somehow soon. So like uh, TD Jake say, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. So, <laughs> but yeah. <clears throat> and thank you too. Cause I know I really, with me, with my voice, I was like, I'm going to press through, even with my voice, you know, this hardly gone. So thank you. 
I know you're welcome. I thank you too as well. Like you just you just help people get in position so that they can overcome through their struggles right. too as well. Because you got to go through a trial or a tribulation. He said he said no weapon formed against you shall prosper. But he ain't saying right. that the weapon wasn't going to form. And you got to mm. be in a position so you can fight. You got to put on that helmet of salvation, that breastplate of righteousness. You feel what I'm saying? You got to use that shield of faith. You got to block. You feel me? You got to fight with that word. That's the sword. You feel me? But if you ain't understand that, you ain't got no root in that, you're going to get weary and well-doing. And when that due season comes, you're not going to reap because you fainted. So appreciate you for coming on, letting us get an understanding of who you are, knowing your testimony, and you just planted some seeds of righteousness in somebody. Somebody going to get saved from this episode because they're going to be going through the same thing. But appreciate you. And as we close out today, can you close us out with a word of prayer? Yes, awesome, awesome, sure can. Father God, we thank you right now for allowing us to be able to connect today. Thank you, God, for allowing Lamont to come in and just give me the opportunity to share my story. Father God, as I'm going through my season right now of the of this grieving process, I ask you that you continue to use me so I can be a vessel from the kingdom. Continue to allow the doors to open up according to your will and not mine. Lord, thank you for us being able to come together because we already know that the grace is sufficient, but the best is yet to come. And so, Father God, I also want to leave out to others a actual prayer I wrote, which is the reset prayer. And anytime, some, anytime that someone is going through something and you need a shift or you need to reset, the prayer I wrote, I said, Father God, I need you to reset me. Renew my mind, restore my soul, revive my heart, recharge my body, replenish my energy so I can be the best version of myself. Amen. 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 Appreciate you for coming on the God's My Source podcast, sharing how you was able to come from pain of purpose mm -hmm. now you in here and you're going to continue to pour into more young women and you're going to help them get out of their trials and tribulations too i see it i see it you're going to be on that stage and it's going to be crazy you're going to be like i made it and you're going to be able to yep. take your family with you your daughter with you everybody but appreciate and you and it's great this is affirmation is on november 10th november the 10th my very first we're going to look at this a year from now three years from now Five years from now, watch. Watch what I tell you. Amen, amen. And thank you all for logging on to the Guys My Source podcast. We we try to do our best to bridge the gap between the Bible, the culture, God, money, business, family, education, relationships. You know that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. So just keep on seeking God and he going to plant you where he need to plant you and you're going to be able to grow just like the people that have been coming on each episode. So thank you all again, and we'll see you all again next time.